Hello students, today we will learn about the Harappan civilization which is the first chapter of history of class 12th under the heading Bricks, Beads and Bones. A new heading is also recently given to this chapter which is the story of the first cities. Indus Valley Civilization ka naam charcha mein aata hai sabse pehli baar 1826 mein when Charles Mason recorded the presence of a vast ruined city with the remains of ruinous brick castle and fragments of walls and buildings in the town of Harappa in Punjab. The mounds were later visited by Alexander Cunningham, director of Archaeological Survey of India in 1853 as a part of a survey of ancient Buddhist site. The next major breakthrough came in 1856 when British engineers John and William Brunton were laying railway lines connecting the cities of Karachi and Lahore decided to use the large quantities of bricks and rubble scattered on the surface of the mounds for constructing railway beds. Before 1921, when Dayaram Sahani got the mound excavated, it was considered that Indian civilization starts from Vedic period. But the excavated mound at Harappa opened the doors of our oldest civilization. Students, there are three different names of this civilization. These are Indus Valley Civilization, Harappan Civilization and Bronze Age Civilization. Let us know why there are three different names of the same civilization. Indus Valley Civilization Initially, the centers of this civilization were found in the valley of Indus River. That is why it was called by the name Indus Valley Civilization. Harappan Civilization The first traces of Indus Valley Civilization were noticed in Harappa and it was the first site that was excavated. That is why it is also known as Harappan Civilization. Bronze Age Civilization As the people of this civilization started using bronze mainly for the purpose of making utensils, idols to worship and tools. That is why it is also called as Bronze Age Civilization. Now let us know about the period of this civilization. There is opinion difference among historians regarding the dates, duration and period of the civilization. According to Sir John Marshall, Indus Valley Civilization was during 3250 to 2750 BC. Whereas according to Mackey, the duration was 2800 to 2500 BC whereas R.M. Wheeler has a different opinion. According to him, it was during 2500 to 1500 BC. But according to a carbon dating, which is more authentic, the initial stage of Indus Valley civilization was 3500 to 2600 BC. And the developed stage was during 2600 to 1900 BC. And the post stage was during 1900 to 1200 BC. Now it becomes mandatory for us to know the abbreviations related to dates. Because BC, BC, sunte, sunte, aapko lag raga. what does the word BC mean? So BC stands for before Christ. Before Christ means before the birth of Christ. AD stands for Anno Domini and the meaning of this AD refers to after the birth of Christ. These terms are now not in use because nowadays AD is replaced by CE whereas BC is by BCE. Whereas BP stands for before present, BCE stands for before common era CE stands for the common era, the present year is 2015 according to this dating system. C stands for Latin word Sika and means approximate. 
सब्सिस्टेंस स्ट्रेटजीज यानी जीवन के निर्वाह के लिए किन चीज़ों का उपयोग किया जाता था जिससे जीवन चल सके यानी स्पेशली खाने पीने की बात कर सकते हैं इसमें हम द हरपन एट अ वाइड रेंज ऑफ प्लांट एंड एनिमल प्रोडक्ट्स इंक्लूडिंग फिश हरपन साइट्स इंक्लूड वीट बर्ले लेंटिन चिक पी एंड सीजन मिलेट्स आर फाउंड फ्रॉम द साइट्स इन गुजरात फाइन्स ऑफ राइस आर रिलेटिवली रेयर एनिमल बोन्स फाउंड एट हरपन साइट इंक्लूड दोज ऑफ कैटल शीप गोड बफेलो एंड पिग स्टडीज डन बाई आर्क्यू जूलॉजिस्ट इंडिकेट दैट these animals were domesticated bones of wild species such as boar deer gharial are also found bones of fish and fowl are also found agricultural technologies yani kheti baadi karne ki kaun kaun si vidhaye us samay par apnai jati thi now the representation on seals and terracotta sculpture indicate that the bull was known and oxen were used for plowing moreover Terracotta models of the plow have been found at sites in Cholistan at and at Banavali Haryana. The field had two sets of rows at right angles to each other, suggesting that two different crops were grown together. Traces of canals have been found at the Harappan site of Shortughai in Afghanistan, but not in Punjab or Sindh. Water drawn from wells was used for irrigation. Water reservoirs found in dholavira gujarat may have been used to store water for agriculture although there are many sites of indus valley civilization but mohenjodaro is the best preserved site it's a very planned urban center meaning of mohenjodaro is mounds of dead mrutakon ka tila you can see through the picture that the whole uh, city is divided into two sections first is citadel and the next one is lower town let's know more about it mohenjodaro is the most well known site the first site to be discovered was harappa the settlement is divided into two sections one smaller but higher ek chhota hissa tha jo unchai par tha and the other मच लार्जर दूसरा हिस्सा काफी बड़ा था पहले वाले की अपेक्षा बट लोअर वो निचली जगहों पर स्थित था आर्कियोलॉजिस्ट डेजिग्नेट दीज एज द सिटेडल जो ऊंचा हिस्सा था छोटा था दैट वॉज सिटेडल एंड द लोअर टाउन जो निचला हिस्सा था लेकिन बहुत बड़ा था दैट वॉज लोअर टाउन रिस्पेक्टिवली द सिटेडल ओस इट्स हाइट टू द फैक्ट दैट बिल्डिंग वर कंस्ट्रक्टेड ऑन मड ब्रिक प्लेटफॉर्म्स इट वॉज वॉल्ड which meant that it was physically separated from the lower town the lower town was also walled it seems that the settlement was first planned and then implemented accordingly yani planning pehle hoti thi uske baad planning ko implement kiya jata tha other signs of planning include bricks which whether sun dried or baked were of a standardized ratio where the length and breadth were four times and twice the height respectively such bricks were used at all harappan settlements now let us know more about the citadel it is the citadel that we find evidence of structures that were probably used for special public purposes these include the warehouse and the great bath इसमें सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट ग्रेट बाथ है नाउ लेट अस नो अबाउट द डायमेंशन ऑफ द ग्रेट बाथ कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स के एंगल से या बोर्ड एग्जाम के एंगल से भी ये इंफॉर्मेशन बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट है कि डायमेंशन क्या थी ग्रेट बाथ की नाउ लेट अस नो अबाउट इट्स डायमेंशन लेंथ वाज 180 फीट एंड द ब्रेथ वाज 108 फीट इन कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स इट मे बी आज इन मीटर्स सो इट इज मैंशन हेयर इन द सेंटर ए पॉन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग डायमेंशन वॉज देयर लेंथ वॉज 39 feet breadth was 23 feet and the depth was 8 feet the warehouse yani mal godam bhandar karne ka sthan the warehouse was a massive structure of which the lower brick portions remain ek bahut hi massive a huge structure of building may be there jiska ki sirf niche wala hissa जो ईटों से बना हुआ था वही शेष बचा है वाइल द अपर पोर्शन प्रोबेबली ऑफ वुड डिकेड लॉन्ग एगो ऊपर का जो सेक्शन था ऊपरी जो हिस्सा था वो लकड़ी से बना हुआ होगा जो समय की मार 
झेल न पाने के कारण नष्ट हो गया होगा Now let us know more about the most important structure of the citadel that is the great bath. The great bath was a large rectangular tank in a courtyard surrounded by a corridor on all four sides. There were two flights of steps on the north and the south leading into the tank. There were rooms on three sides in one of which was a large well. Water from the tank flowed into a huge drain. Across a lane to the north lay a smaller building with eight bathrooms, four on each side of a corridor, with drains from each bathroom connecting to a drain that ran along the corridor. The uniqueness of the structure has led the scholars to suggest that it was meant for some kind of a special ritual bath. Now it's time to know more about the second section of the city that is the lower town the lower town at Mohenjo-daro provides examples of residential buildings many were centered on a courtyard with rooms on all sides the courtyard was probably the center of activities such as cooking and weaving particularly during hot and dry weather what is also in trusting is an apparent concern for privacy there are no windows in the walls along the ground level besides the main entrance does not give a direct view of the interior or the courtyard every house had its own bathroom paved with bricks with drains connected through the wall to the street drains some houses have remains of staircases to reach a second story or the roof many houses had wells now let us have a look on the most distinctive features of harappan cities they had carefully planned drainage system the roads and streets were laid out along an approximate grid pattern intersecting at right angles it seems that streets with drains were laid out first and then houses built along them if domestic waste water had to flow into the street drains every house needed to have at least one wall along a street now have a look on the plight of harappa although harappa was the first site to be discovered it was badly destroyed by brick robbers many of the ancient structures at the site were damaged in contrast mohenjo-daro was far better preserved now let us have a look on the documentary on mohenjo-daro presented by national geographic channel main is channel ka abhar vyakt karta hu ki is kadar behtareen documentary banayi jo students ke liye bahut hi beneficial hai thank you national geographic first urban centers in human history nestled in southern pakistan's indus river valley mohenjo-daro is the largest and best preserved city of the indus civilization the earliest known civilization of the indian subcontinent mohenjo-daro was built around 2500 bc about the same time the great pyramids were being built in egypt and it spanned a surface area of nearly 500 acres an incredible size for a city of this time period Because of Mohenjo-daro's grand scale, archaeologists believe it may have served as a seat of power for the Indus civilization. The city was divided into two districts, the citadel and the lower town. The citadel is home to the city's exceptional monuments, including the Great Bath, a 900 square foot tank fed from the Indus River. Mohenjo-daro also had a sophisticated water system. Houses had baths and toilets, and the town featured both an elaborate sewage system and fresh water in 700 wells throughout the city. The Roman baths, some of history's most famous waterway systems, weren't constructed until many hundreds of years after Mohenjo-daro's Great Bath. 
Mohenjo-daro has no places of worship or governance, such as palaces, royal tombs, or temples. This may indicate that the society was not built around state interests like the Egyptian and Mesopotamian societies at the time. Rather, the class structure of Mohenjo-daro may have been relatively equal. The city's second district, the Lower Town, may demonstrate the society's egalitarian structure. The Lower Town, with its intricate water system, was home to between 20,000 to 40,000 people. Unlike many urban areas of its time, it was laid out in a grid system similar to modern-day city blocks. After approximately 600 years, the city collapsed. No one is quite sure why, but the cause could potentially have been a change within the culture or in the path of the river. Without its crucial source of water, the city's residents may have moved away, leaving Mohenjo-daro nearly abandoned. Main centers of the civilization. Is heading ke antargat kuch mahin baatein उन सेंटर्स के बारे में बताई जाएंगी जो एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू या कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट है सो प्लीज पे अटेंशन एंड लिसन इट अटेंटिवली द मेन सेंटर्स आर हरप्पा मोहनजदारो चनुदरो कोटला निहंग खान कलीबंगन लोथल आलमगीरपुर धोलावीरा संघौल बनावली राखी घड़ी मीताथल मांडा नागेश्वर रंगपुर एट्सेट्रा एट्सेट्रा इसलिए कि इसके अलावा बहुत सारे हैं जो शायद हम इस इसमें पूरा नहीं कर पाएंगे इस चैप्टर के अंतर्गत सो एट सेक्टर इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल हरप्पा सिचुएटेड ऑन द बैंक ऑफ रिवर रावी इन माउंट गमरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ वेस्टर्न पंजाब इन पाकिस्तान इट वाज डिस्कवर्ड बाय आर बी दया राम सहान इन नाइनटीन द मोस्ट रिमार्केबल स्ट्रक्चर एंड लार्जेस्ट बिल्डिंग ऑफ इट वॉज ग्रीनरी नेक्स्ट वन इज मोहनजेदारो सिचुएटेड ऑन द बैंक ऑफ द रिवर इंडस इन लरकाना डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ सिंध इन पाकिस्तान It was discovered by R. D. Banerjee in 1922. The most remarkable structure was the Great Bath, Chunhu Daro, situated in the Sindh district. Discovered by N. G. Mazumdar in 1930. This place was famous for beads making, shell cutting, metal working, seal making, and weight making. Kotla Nihang Khan, situated in the Ropar district of Punjab, on the bank of the river Satluj, discovered by Y. D. Sharma in 1953. Kalibangan, situated in Ganganagar district of Rajasthan, it is famous for bangles, discovered by A. Ghosh in 1953. Lothal, situated in Ahmedabad district of Gujarat. It was a famous port city discovered by S R Rao in 1955. Alamgirpur situated in Meerut district of Uttar Pradesh discovered by Y D Sharma in 1958. The next one is Dholavira situated in Gujarat discovered by J P Joshi 1967-68. Ponds are found in abundance here. Their water may be used for irrigation. It was the largest city of Harappan culture in India. Next is Sanghol. Sanghol is situated in Ludhiana district of Punjab, discovered by R S Bisht and S S Talwar in 1968. Banavali, situated in Hisar district of Haryana, discovered by R S Bisht in 1973. Some other centers are also there. Among them, Rakhi Gadi and Meeta Thal in Haryana, Manda in Jammu and Kashmir. Nageshwar and Rangpur in Gujarat are the main tracking social differences archaeologists generally use certain strategies to find out whether there were social or economic differences amongst people living within a particular culture these include starting burials in harappan sites the dead were generally in pits Sometimes there were differences in the way the burials pit was made. In some instances, the hollowed out spaces were lined with bricks. Some graves contained pottery and ornaments, perhaps indicating a belief that these could be used in the afterlife. Jewelry has been found in burials both men and women 
in some instances the dead were buried with copper mirrors but on the whole it appears that harappans did not believe in burying precious things with the dead seals and script the harappan seal is possibly the most distinctive artifact of the harappans or indus valley civilization made of a stone called steatite hindi mein se seal khadi kaha jata hai seals and sealings were used to facilitate long distance communication most inscriptions are short the longest containing about 26 signs although the script remains undeciphered to date it was evidently not alphabetical as it has just too many signs somewhere between 375 and 400 it is apparent that the script was written from right to left as some seals show a wider spacing on the right and cramping on the left as if the engraver began working from the right and then ran out of space weight and craft exchanges were regulated by a precise system of weights usually made of a stone called chert and generally cubical with no markings lower denominations of weights were binary 1 2 4 8 16 32 etc up to 12800 while the higher denomination followed the decimal system the smaller weights were probably used for weighing jewelry and beads the variety of materials used to make beads is remarkable stones like carnelian of a beautiful red color jasper crystal quartz and steatite metals like copper bronze and gold and shelfians and terracotta or burnt clay some beads were made of two or more stones cemented together some of stone with gold caps the shapes were numerous disc shaped cylindrical spherical barrel shape segmented problems of interpretation certain objects were seemed unusual or unfamiliar or may have had a religious significance these included terracotta figurines of women heavily jeweled some with elaborate head dresses these were regarded as mother goddesses rare stone statuary of men in an almost standardized posture seated with one hand on the knee such as the priest king was also similarly classified some animals such as the one horned animal often called the unicorn depicted on seals seem to be the mythical creatures conical stone objects have been classified as lingas contact with distant lands recent archaeological finds suggest that copper was probably brought from oman on the south eastern tip of the arabian peninsula they had trade relations with bahrain and mesopotamia the end of civilization several explanations have been put forward these include climatic change deforestation excessive floods and shifting or drying up of rivers to overuse of landscape some of these causes may hold for certain settlements but they do not explain the collapse of the entire civilization now it's time to say thanks to historians archaeologists and scholars jinhone hame hamare root se rubru karaya hame parichit karaya aur isi ke sath is chapter ka samapan karte hain goodbye thank you